the title of the talk is on molecular pathways controlling myocardial function, very general, but uh, <coughs> since uh, uh, after 40 minutes everybody's tired, I will focus on only on this, uh, some, some uh, uh, experiments that we, are, uh, co we have been conducting in the lab for the last uh, few years on the AKT pathway. Uh, uh, so our lab is involved uh, uh, mo mainly in understanding the, uh, how the heart reacts to external load or to um, pressure overload situations or as well as uh, how the um, heart uh, reacts to defects in, uh, of the myocardial cell. And uh, uh, this is a, a very general slide, but uh, uh, the heart undergoes uh, uh, hypertrophy when it is stimulated by, uh, for example, <coughs> an increase of, in blood pressure. And uh, uh, this is compensatory, usually, but uh, um, it can become uh, decompensated and uh, uh, many groups are studying the mechanism through which uh, the cardiac cell is not able to cope with stress uh, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, the, the heart becomes uh, uh, in, it becomes a, a failing <coughs> heart, uh, switching from hypertrophy to failing heart. And uh, the uh, phenomena, the biological phenomena that uh, um, underline this process are for sure myocyte hypertrophy uh, and apoptosis, but there is also a significant uh, role played by fibrosis that uh, uh, for example, after myocardial infarction or, or in uh, a, a untreated hypertension, there is a, a remodeling of the heart, and this remodeling uh, is very important, this fibrosis uh, process. And there is angiogenesis, and uh, arrhythmias are usually uh, involved in, uh, I mean, uh, they accompany all these processes. So the, uh, the heart becomes arrhythmic uh, when there is uh, uh, this switch from uh, hypertrophy to uh, heart failure and uh, because of gene expression changes and other molecular mechanisms that involve <coughs> the, the um, uh, molecules that regulate the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, electrophysiological potential. So this is uh, a slide that resumes the type of uh, hypertrophies that uh, uh, the, the myocyte can undergo and there are two types, uh, it is uh, of course a general division uh, general classification, but the myocyte cell can undergo um, a sort of physiological hypertrophy uh, whereby uh, there is a, a sort of uh, um, equilibrated type of growth uh, in both in, uh, in uh, size and in length, but also the physiological hypertrophy is typical uh, because uh, there is uh, a sufficient amount of capillaries that uh, um, accompany the growth of the myocyte. In concentric hypertrophy, the, there is a, 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 probably a, a, an increase in protein synthesis uh, that is uh, higher than uh, physiological hypertrophy, and it's also typical the expression of, uh, of uh, fetal genes, embryonic genes, uh, that is uh, definitely more remarkable than in this state. That is to say that uh, these two types of hypertrophies have different genetic uh, uh, pathways. That are, uh, that are activated. Uh, for example, the uh, gene expression in, of the embryonic genes in uh, the physiological hypertrophy is uh, less significant. So these are different. And uh, uh, as all the cells, there are uh, the signal transduction molecules involved in uh, inducing hypertrophy are many. And uh, uh, this is an old slide. Uh, it didn't change a lot in the last few years, but. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, MAP kinases are always involved in both uh, physiological and pathological hypertrophies. Calcidurin uh, pathway, as has been described by Jeff Bolkenstein, is definitely a very important uh, pathway that uh, is uh, uh, involved in uh, pathological hypertrophy. And, uh, uh, but this pathway, the, uh, Pietrica, the IGF-1 receptor uh, signal transduction pathway, is uh, significant uh, in uh, physiological hypertrophy. And so uh, that doesn't mean that this is not activated, uh, at least at the beginning, by stimuli that induce pathological hypertrophy, but this is uh, a typical pathway that uh, is activated, for example, when you uh, 
um, induce tra training to mice, for example, uh, you make the mice swimming or, uh, um, or do treadmill exercise. And, uh, <coughs> and so the, the pathway, uh, maybe all of you know about this pathway, but uh, pietri canis is activated uh, and uh, then uh, pietri canis activates AKT through uh, the PDK1, uh, PDK, and, and this is uh, then uh, um, indirectly activates mTOR. And so our work today will focus on, on these two molecules. Uh, the AKT and mTOR, and I will show you some data on how, uh, what these two proteins uh, um, do in the cell. And you know that mTOR is a key molecule regulating uh, the, um, the translation. So, uh, and this is done through these two proteins, it is 4-BP1 and P70. But I will come later on this. So, um, we were basically interesting in two aspects uh, activated by the IGF-1 pathway. One is uh, the effect on calcium, and the other one is the effect on hypertrophy. I will very briefly tell you what our group found about uh, <coughs> this, uh, uh, that is calcium handling. And uh, uh, we were discussing before with Mauro, and uh, um, if you think about when the myocyte uh, in increases, you have to provide the same capacity of the myocyte to, um, to excitate and contract. So there, when the, the cell becomes bigger, uh, then you have the, the capacity of the cell to handle calcium has to increase accordingly. Um, and so we, um, just, just to remind how uh, the calcium metabolism players are in the heart, and the, the key molecules are, are this. First of all, the L-type calcium channel, uh, the L-type calcium channel uh, it, that uh, mediates the entrance of the calcium from the outside uh, into the inside of the cell. And this uh, it makes uh, one big complex uh, with a rhinodine receptor that uh, uh, is in these uh, vesicles, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and is very close to the, the sarcolemma. And so uh, when the stimulus uh, uh, strikes the cell, then L-type calcium channel open, and there is a small amount of calcium, so <coughs> let's say 10% uh, of the overall amount of calcium that uh, increases during uh, uh, the systolic uh, uh, phase of uh, cell contraction. And then a lot of calcium is released by uh, this uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is uh, a sort of, uh, in, of uh, a cellular storage of calcium. And then the, 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 a lot of calcium gets out of the rhinodine receptor, and this then uh, is uh, um, important for um, actomycin uh, uh, myofilament uh, uh, crossing, and uh, so contraction takes place. And then after this uh, systolic phase, there is a diastolic phase, and this pump called uh, CERCA2 is, uh, uh, it brings the, the calcium back into the, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and then is, this is ready to, to be released again for the next uh, cycle of contraction, and also important this protein, uh, sodium calcium exchanger. So these are the, the two proteins uh, that are important for uh, decreasing the levels of calcium are uh, CERCA2, uh, 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 sarcoplasmic reticulum pump, uh, and then uh, the sodium calcium exchanger. Uh, while, uh, so the, the L-type calcium channel is very important for starting this process, which is then amplified by uh, this protein called rhinodine receptor. So to make a long story short, uh, we, we were studying the effect of uh, AKT in the heart. We constructed some transgenic mice. In particular, the AKT uh, a kinase is made of uh, Two main, two main uh, moieties. One is uh, the plexin domain uh, that binds to, uh, to the membrane, and the other one is the kinase. So we, we use the, a, a moderate, say, active form of AKT, which is, uh, uh, has a sort of, ple of plexin domain mutated in a way that binds always to, uh, to the membrane. Uh, and uh, we uh, found that if you overexpress this in the heart, and you measure cardiac contractivity, the, uh, this is a DPDT parameter, which is a, a, an invasive uh, a parameter of calcium, uh, of, uh, sorry, of, of contraction. Uh, there is a, a, a significant increase of uh, uh, calcium, uh, of, sorry, of contractivity uh, as compared to control. 
So the transgenics were um, contracting, the heart was contracting more as compared to the control. So we <coughs> focused on this. Uh, so this is uh, uh, isolating uh, the myocytes uh, from, uh, from the, the adult myocytes from these transgenics. We found that uh, uh, these cells, uh, uh, when they are isolated, contract more and they have higher uh, transients, calcium transients. So there is more calcium metabolism in the cell. And uh, um, so we um, started to focus on uh, the uh, L-type calcium channel and, uh, uh, the, um, and whether we, 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 we asked whether the L-type calcium channel was affected by AKT uh, in terms of uh, activity. Um, so that means uh, uh, amount of calcium that entered the cells through the L-type calcium channel. So this is a, uh, the calcium channel is made in <coughs> of a, um, one, a few subunits, the, the main subunit is alpha-1C, uh, which is a seven-membrane spanning domain protein, and uh, this binds in, from the intracellular side with the beta-2 uh, subunit, which is a sort of chaperone protein that is important for the maturation of this alpha-1C to the membrane. And so uh, they interact through this domain called I, uh, I, uh, AID domain. Uh, so we, to, to study the, the role of AKT in, uh, in uh, the heart, we did this uh, knockout of PDK1. Um, so PDK1 activates uh, AKT and uh, phosphorylates it uh, in uh, residue 308. Uh, AKT is phosphorylated in two residues, 308 and 473, also another one, but these two are the most studies, studied. So the 308 is critical for activation of AKT and we reasoned that if we induced uh, the knockout of this gene, we could block uh, the activation of, three, of the three forms of AKT because in the cell there are three AKTs, one, two, and three. So you want to have something that blocks uh, the activation of the three AKTs. So we did this knockout uh, um, by co crossing uh, the um, locks the P uh, PDK1 uh, mouse from, uh, this comes from the lab of uh, uh, Dario Alessi in uh, Dandy and uh, um, and, and then we uh, crossing with the Cree um, that was expressed uh, and inducible in, uh, in the heart with alpha myosin image chain promoter. So if you give tamoxifen, this uh, hearts undergo uh, dilatation and there was a heart failure and this correlated with the decrease in uh, PDK1 uh, um, protein levels as it should. So <coughs> This uh, it becomes lethal in uh, very few days. Uh, and uh, if you look at uh, the calcium, uh, uh, the effects on calcium, uh, these are isolated myocytes and there is uh, less calcium current uh, in these uh, knockouts. Uh, and in the transgenic, there is the opposite, so there is more calcium current. And uh, this also translates in uh, a decrease in uh, contractivity in uh, isolated cells. So the, the basically, if you knock out uh, PDK1 and you isolate the myocytes, these are these contract less. And the calcium uh, is uh, uh, calcium current is less significant uh, in the PDK1 knockout, it's significantly decreased. Uh, so we, we looked at the level of uh, alpha 1C proteins and we found that uh, uh, there was uh, a decrease in the in the amount of alpha 1C when you knocked out uh, uh, PDK1, and so that when also this correlated with the decrease in phosphorylation of AKT in the <coughs> residue 308, which is the residue that is phosphorylated by PDK1. And uh, um, of course, uh, also the, the phosphorylation of uh, one subset of AKT, the, the JSK3 beta was decreased in the knockout. And then uh, to make a long story short, we found that uh, the beta 2 uh, subunit uh, was uh, uh, phosphorylated in the transgenic for AKT and was less phosphorylated uh, in the knockout uh, of PDK1. So uh, this indicating that uh, the beta-2 was directly phosphorylated by, by uh, AKT. And, uh, uh, and also we did some studies with uh, back phosphorylation that uh, gives you the idea of how much phosphorylation, uh, how much is phosphorylated the protein by providing uh, ATP, ATP from the outside. And if there is less uh, phosphorylation, uh, you, 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 think you make the conclusion that uh, 
the, uh, the, the, the protein is less phosphorylated. So we, we, we had a lot of uh, phosphorylation of, uh, um, in this in vitro assays of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the beta-2 subunit from the uh, PDK1 knockout because uh, the protein was not phosphorylated in vivo, so in vitro it could be phosphorylated more. And uh, uh, we also found that uh, if you, um, uh, so we, we found that if you mutate this site uh, the, of the beta 2, you could uh, uh, recover more alpha 1b in the cells. This is a, a mutant that uh, basically is a, a, a mimic of the effect of AKT. So it's mutated in the AKT uh, phosphorylation site. Uh, so it is a sort of, of constitutively active uh, uh, mutant. So if you express this beta-2 in the cell, there is more alpha-1. So that means more alpha-1 protein. So that means it's a, a sort of uh, stabilizer of, uh, of, uh, of, this, uh, um, of the alpha-1. And then we found that uh, the alpha-1 protein has these uh, pest sequences. So that if you um, basically um, take the space sequences out, uh, the protein is, becomes more stable. And this is interesting because uh, they um, overlap with also with, uh, in particular this one, with uh, the binding site for beta-2. So the idea is that uh, beta-2 binds to the alpha-1c and uh, uh, covers uh, these space sequences from uh, some uh, um, proteases, internal proteases, uh, so that uh, um, basically it doesn't allow the proteases to degrade the alpha-1c. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, so, um, and so then, then we, we used uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, beta-2 and, um, and alpha-1 in, uh, in heterologous systems to do studies of electrophysiological studies. And we found that, uh, for example, if you overexpress these two in uh, and then also with uh, the mutation site that uh, mimics the effects of AKT, you increase the calcium current. So the idea that we came out is this, that uh, the IGF-1 insulin bind, uh, activates PDK-1. PDK-1, of course, uh, activates AKT. AKT phosphorylates beta-2, and this uh, increases the amount of uh, alpha-1 on the surface of the membrane. If you don't have uh, this uh, pathway, there is uh, an increased protein degradation of uh, alpha-1 uh, um, alpha c because beta-2 uh, doesn't bind to alpha-1 and that induces the degradation of uh, alpha-1 c in, in the cell. And so this, is, uh, uh, this may explain uh, the effect of, uh, on inotropism of, of the IGF-1 pathway. Uh, then the other, um, then we are f following up on this, we, we made some peptides uh, that um, have uh, the same effect of beta-2, and we found uh, that we, uh, all, using only some peptides that uh, uh, mimic the effect of AKT, uh, um, the, uh, we can increase the L-type calcium current, and also we can increase the amount of uh, uh, alpha-1c in the cell. So we are probably we collaborate with Mauro to do some viruses that uh, uh, to, to show whether this effect in vivo may also hold true. So the other effect is on uh, hypertrophy, and of course is uh, um, important uh, because uh, this pathway is always activated in cardiac hypertrophy. And uh, <coughs> if, for those of you who don't know a lot about this uh, uh, mTOR pathway, um, AKT act induces the activation of, of mTOR, but it's a sort of indirect because uh, AKT what it does is to phosphorylate these two uh, TSC proteins uh, that uh, this uh, inhibit uh, uh, this, uh, the, the, these two proteins, so um, that indirectly activates mTOR uh, through uh, basically uh, releasing the inhibition of Reb GDP and becomes Reb GDP and this uh, uh, without this uh, passage the Reb G GB Reb GTP uh, can uh, bind to mTOR and activate the mTOR. Uh, so mTOR may, uh, may exist in two uh, forms, Rictor and Raptor. So the one, the, 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 the complex that binds Raptor 
uh, is the one which we will focus mostly. And this is uh, um, a, an important regulator of protein synthesis in particular, and, but through the phosphorylation of both S6 kinase and 4-ABP1. Um, these two are key uh, protein, uh, proteins regulating protein translation. And in particular, 4-ABP1, uh, 4-ABP, because there are at least three 4-ABPs, uh, uh, is an inhibitor of the initiation of translation, while this one regulates the, um, the phosphorylation of S6, which is a ribosomal protein, and this, is in, uh, uh, this uh, regulates the, this passage regulates the velocity of translation. So this is a, a sort of critical step, this, uh, in, in, so initiation step, this is instead a, a rate step. Um, and so this uh, mTOR has a lot of effects on autophagy, it's a key protein in autophagy, also has an effect on uh, apoptosis. In particular for apoptosis, uh, um, it is thought that uh, TORC2 is important. TORC2 is an uh, mTOR multiprotein complex that binds to Rictor, so not Raptor but Rictor. And this phosphorylates AKT back to uh, residue 473. This is thought to be important for the anti-apoptotic effect of AKT. So this is a sort of circuit. Um, so AKT is, just to <laughs> remind, is phosphorylated by 308 by PDK1. And then the, once this uh, happens, it is phosphorylated back to uh, 473 and then becomes fully activated. Um, mTOR inhibitors are used in cancer. In particular, uh, the rapamycin derivatives are used in many types of cancers, and they, the, the effect is thought to be dependent on the phosphorylation of 473. Uh, although, uh, as I show you later, even if you block this uh, uh, effect, there are, there are the, the, at the mTOR there, are, there is still a phosphorylation of 473. So uh, that's open the question of whether the inhibitors that are used in cancer have only this effect uh, on. Uh, on, uh, on mTOR. But anyway, this is uh, back to the regulation of translation. Uh, for ABP, uh, when it's phosphorylated by, by mTOR, doesn't bind to IF4E. So IF4E is uh, important because it binds to IF4G uh, and uh, IAF4G. And uh, this, uh, uh, once, once it's bound to, uh, so these two, uh, for e and for g are bound, the mRNAs that have this cap uh, structure are translated. So this is a, a regulation of especially of this uh, uh, cap, uh, uh, cap mRNAs. And so uh, the nutrients activates mTOR or, or IG1 <laughs> activates mTOR and this phosphorates for a BP1, uh, for a BP1 uh, that is uh, um, phosphorylated uh, induces, uh, cannot bind to, to, to IF4E and so translation goes up, and uh, vice versa when this uh, uh, happens. So in, uh, if you take the, say the, the, the heart uh, situation, when you do a bending, you have an increase the, in uh, activation of mTOR, and this is, a, you can see it indirectly by the phosphorylation of 4 bp one and this is after, say, a few days of bending, or even immediately after bending. There is a phosphorylation of 4 bp one a phosphorylation of a 6 kinase, so that means that mTOR is activated. Okay, these are TAC mice, so there is more phosphorylation. So the, the, whenever, whatever stimulus you do on the heart, uh, mTOR is activated. And uh, also, interestingly, if you, uh, the, the whole uh, pathway is increased, so the amount of uh, mTOR in the heart after TAC is increased, Rictor is increased, uh, Raptor, pardon, is increased, Rictor also, and phosphorylation is increased. So, uh, but in the long term, if you, um, keep this uh, pressure overload stimulus for long term, uh, you have a decreased uh, activity of mTOR. So in this is a uh, frank heart failure, so uh, very, um, the, the, the heart uh, that has been undergoing a, a stress for many days, many weeks. So there is a decrease in this pathway. And, uh, and so the literature on this uh, is divided among those that believe that M inhib inhibiting mTOR in a setting of cardiac hypertrophy is good, because there are some, some, uh, some papers that show that if you give rapamycin to uh, mice that undergo hypertrophy, there is a, a better cardiac function. And, uh, uh, and those that were, uh, it was shown that if you 
uh, for example, do this the kinase dead uh, overexpression of uh, of uh, mTOR, there is a, an impaired in cardiac function. So we did this approach by uh, knockout. So we did a knockout of mTOR in in, uh, in the heart through a Crelox system, and uh, what we found was that. Uh, uh, these mice uh, undergo heart failure and die. This is a survival curve. They are all dead by eight weeks. Just to remind you that the other one, they were dead in, in nine days, all dead. So the, the other one probably was also related to a, an arrhythmic effect due to the uh, altered metabol calcium metabolism. But this one takes a while before they all die. But uh, and, and so you see that this is a cardiac function measured by DPDT. Uh, and this is a dobutamine stress test where you give the butamine and you see that the curve is flat in the knockout as compared to the uh, control. And it's uh, uh, just to show the interesting, uh, the failing hearts, uh, at least in experimental failing hearts, you have that hypertrophy is always a constant. Well, in this case, uh, there was a decrease in, in the size of the cells, of myocytes, and also a decrease in the corporation of leucine, which is uh, a uh, gold standard for uh, for uh, for for uh, assessing uh, uh, the hypertrophic effect, uh, and also you see that uh, these uh, stress uh, um, uh, genes were all up regulated. Uh, so uh, this uh, um, so in, in particular ANF, uh, um, um, beta myosin inhibition, and uh, actin. So if you look, so there is a, if you take also isolated myocytes, the, these myocytes are uh, in, a bad, in a worse shape as compared to the controls, and there was less incorporation of uh, leucine. And uh, uh, then our lab is focusing now on uh, understanding uh, uh, what, what is in the polysomal fraction, because uh, these mRNAs are uh, probably, most probably, the ones that are controlled by mTOR. So um, this, uh, uh, we found that uh, in the knockout there is a, a, um, a decrease in the polysomal uh, fraction as compared to the control uh, of the RNAs. And you can see the profile, uh, these two peaks, uh, there is uh, uh, in the knockout uh, less, uh, um, I mean, the, this, the heavy ones that are the polysomal are decreased as compared to, to the knockout. So we are, we are uh, trying to understand what are these, uh, uh, these, uh, the genes that are in this uh, component uh, of RNA in the cell uh, to uh, determine uh, uh, what are the genes that are uh, most probably regulated uh, in a, in a, through this mechanism, uh, at least uh, part of it, uh, through this mechanism in situations of, uh, of, uh, um, of, of hypertrophy. And uh, we found that there was a very significant about responsible for the heart failure, this phenomenon, and increased significantly in, in these hearts. And uh, also some uh, slides show, also some uh, electromicroscopy slides show that mitochondria are not in great shape in these knockouts. Um, and there is uh, autophagy, okay, because uh, um, mTOR is a critical molecule for preventing aut uh, autophagy. Without uh, mTOR, there is a uh, an increase in uh, autophagic genes and also these figures of, uh, uh, that are typical of autophagy. But uh, uh, we don't know whether autophagy is bad or good. And so we are, we are crossing these mice uh, with mice that should have much less autophagy. Um, I, don't, I think that uh, autophagy will not, is not a big player in this uh, situation. Actually, autophagy helps cardiac function, as been shown by others, that in, during, in this setting, say, bending, uh, um, there, when there is less autophagy, the, the heart does wo uh, worse than, uh, than uh, if you don't block this pathway. So this uh, to show that uh, uh, apoptosis progressively increases in mTOR knockout, mitochondrial structure is, is compromised and there is a, a, an increase in autophagy. So this is signaling. So signaling is a sort of nightmare <laughs> because there are so many uh, proteins in this mTOR complexes. These are, Big, but anyway, this is a, a torque one, and we found that uh, reactor it decreases uh, accordingly, less, but there is significant decrease. Uh, what is interesting, uh, and uh, uh, I ask you to focus on this, is uh, that for a BP1, uh, non phosphate for a BP1, of course, increases, okay, because there is a less less mTOR, 
But uh, there is uh, also a total amount of 4BP1 that was uh, very significantly increased. And uh, of course, S6 kinase was decreased. Um, so uh, this, uh, the, 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 this fact that uh, the 4BP1 amount increases was typical of, of these knockouts. Uh, and also, uh, torc uh, the, uh, regarding torque signaling, what is interesting is that uh, in many cellular systems, it was shown that uh, if you inhibit mTOR, you inhibit also the phosphorylation of AKT in uh, 473, serine 473. But in this case, you do the knockout, uh, and you have an increase in uh, 308, uh, in both 308 and 473. And this is uh, uh, quite strange, because you expect that uh, this, uh, uh, the, since torque 2 was also decreased, because our, our rector is, uh, this one should have been decreased. decreased. So uh, how this may happen, and uh, um, we have a paper that was recently accepted, <coughs> but uh, I mean, we just gave mice, so we didn't uh, do a lot of work with uh, ourselves, but we found that there are other proteins in the cells that are, uh, once you knock out uh, mTOR, are activated and are able to phosphorylate AKT in this residue. And I think this is important, again, because there is a, a big uh, effort by companies to develop inhibitors of mTOR that are important for cancer. So that's, uh, uh, in fact, now there are other inhibitors of mTOR that uh, seem to uh, prevent also this uh, activation. Anyway, this, uh, in also in other models uh, of heart failure, we found that uh, 4-ABP1 was increased. <coughs> so, for example, in the MLP knockout, which is a, a mouse model of, of heart failure, in du uh, due to the uh, absence of MLP, there was a decrease in the 4-ABP1. So, um, and uh, the, um, this is a summary, as I show you. So, the 4-ABP1 increased significantly. So, now the question is, uh, Oh, that's uh, another question, a small question we can answer with this model. That is, uh, um, in the literature, there is a lot of question whether hypertrophy is good or bad for, uh, for the heart to cope with stress. So uh, the idea now to, to, to see is whether, um, so these mice don't develop hypertrophy. So if you um, induce hypertrophy in a situation where you have less mTOR, uh, what happened to uh, the cardiac function, whether the cardiac function is, is better or, or, or worse. And we found that uh, in the situations where you have uh, less mTOR, not complete the deletion of mTOR, and there is at least at the echo still not heart failure yet, um, we found that there was, a, a, if you do a stress, there was a significant uh, heart failure in, in this uh, mice. So uh, the, if you block the capacity of the myocyte to undergo hypertrophy in the short term, you have a, a bad effect on, uh, on, um, on heart function. And uh, just uh, also, okay, this is a, uh, less capacity also to induce uh, stress genes, but uh, this is just a, 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 say a sort of for cardiologists, uh, maybe for uh, for people working on other topics, it's not so, so critical, but uh, there was a lot of debate always on uh, whether hypertrophy is good or bad. Of course, in the short term, uh, this is a reaction to stress, so if it's, it's there in nature, it should be good, but in long term, it's, it's bad. But if you prevent the cell to undergo hypertrophy, uh, then it's uh, dramatic for, for the heart because uh, it goes free, uh, faster to heart failure. Anyway, so the, 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 the question is, uh, what is the the role of mTOR substrates in mediating this myocardial effect. So that means, what is the role of S61, the two main substrates of TORC1, S61 and 4-ABP? So we had a, a, a previous paper by uh, Thomas and the Seguizumos group that showed that if you knock out uh, the uh, S6 kinase, uh, there is no effect on hypertrophy, uh, no effect on the capacity of the uh, cell to undergo hypertrophy of the myocytes to undergo hypertrophy. So uh, we then asked whether 4-ABP1 was important, and we, are, we had this mouse from uh, uh, Nahum Sonnenberg in uh, Montreal. He's uh, the, the leader expert in the studies of translation, the role of, of 4 bp one and mTOR in uh, different uh, physiological and pathological situations. So we asked uh, him to give us his mice, and this, uh, we got first this uh, 4-ABP1 knockout mouse, and you can see that uh, uh, the 4-ABP1 is the main form expressed in the heart, 
And this is a 40 BP2, is expressed all over, uh, but uh, there's also a 40 BP3. But uh, in the heart, uh, we found uh, 40 BP1 and 40 BP2. But mostly in the normal condition, 40 BP1 was highly expressed. So we, we did a, a knockout of, uh, of uh, the crossing of, uh, of 40 BP1 and the mTOR knockout to see whether uh, the accumulation of 40 BP1 in the setting of the mTOR knockout would uh, uh, have a, a functional role. So we, um, we did this crossing with uh, Nahum Sonnenberg mice. And uh, so these mice don't have 4 BP1 and don't have mTOR. And uh, we found uh, that uh, survival is uh, dramatically in improved in these mice. So this is uh, mTOR alone. This is mTOR 4 BP1. So the, the mice eventually die, but uh, the, the, the effect on survival is very significant. And uh, <coughs> so we found that uh, just uh, um, if you if you look at uh, uh, the cardiac function and do all the histology and uh, biochemistry at four weeks, uh, the 4 BP1 uh, uh, and mTOR double knockouts are uh, normal. So the, the all the parameters are are normalized. Uh, for this one, it's fractional shortening at the echo, where this is the the mTOR knockout and this is a double knockout. So there, uh, it's normalized and. Uh, uh, and this is uh, the effect also gross anatomy. You can see fracture shortening in uh, um, at four weeks is uh, quite normal, comparable to 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 the to the normal mice. But uh, at eleven weeks, those uh, survive uh, decrease the fracture shortening. Although, again, uh, although this is uh, uh, quite significant as an effect, there is uh, much less apoptosis in the double knockouts. And this is the most significant effect. Uh, and uh, just, just to tell you that uh, autophagy is the same. So uh, it seems that 4 bp one is not involved in, in uh, autophagic control. And there is less uh, fibrosis. Uh, and also the size of myocytes is very similar in the four, in double knockout 4 bp one as compared <coughs> to, to mTOR. Uh, so um, we found that uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, the, there is uh, an effect on uh, increased expression. If you uh, look at the, if you do experiments in the cardiac myocytes by overexpressing uh, a, a form of uh, uh, hypophosphorylated 4-ABP1, uh, so non-phosphorylated 4-ABP1, that there is uh, an increase in effect on the expression of uh, uh, caspase 3, caspase 9, but, but not, no effect on, on autophagic genes. So that means that uh, 40 BP1 is involved in some, some way in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, autophagy and uh, in, pardon, in uh, apoptosis, but not in autophagy. And this is also true, uh, um, this, uh, these are the experiments uh, using uh, fluorescence and uh, we found that uh, caspase 3 is increased in, uh, in terms of fluorescence in these mice in this uh, cells of expressing for non phosphorylatable 4 BP. So it means that 4 BP is, has a, a pro apoptotic effect. Uh, just to give you a summary that uh, uh, 4 BP1 significantly improves uh, the survival in mTOR knockout mice. The mitochondrial structure also is improved. Uh, and fibrosis apoptosis uh, is diminished. I didn't show all the slides, but you know, it's, you know, if you improve cardiac function, improve also fibrosis, decrease apoptosis, etc. And so at least at four weeks, there is a normalization of cardiac function. And so this is uh, the, the guy who did most of the work on mTOR in San Diego, uh, while, uh, um, so he does a lot of crossing and knockouts, etc. And it is uh, uh, Deng Hong uh, Zhang in the lab uh, of uh, UCSD. And uh, Daniele Catalucci did uh, the other part, most of the other part, uh, of the um, effect of uh, AKT in uh, calcium signaling, and is now continuing this work in his own lab in uh, CNR in Milan, CNR Multimedica, IRX Multimedica. And then we have collaborated a lot with Nahun Sonnenberg, at least with reagents, uh, with, who is like a godfather of this uh, subject, in, at least in cancer. And these are the two granting agencies that, uh, for, for this type of work. So thank you for uh, your attention.